One of the reasons so many people make false judgments or mistakes is the firm assent or agreement given to ideas joined or disjoined before there is any clear conception whether they agree or disagree. For example, saying A and B are joined without a clear perception if A and B agree. Let us look at how ideas are joined. A proposition is a sentence wherein two or more ideas or terms are joined or disjoined by one affirmation, that is, something that affirms it to be true, or by a negation, something that shows that they do not join. For example, the statement, Plato was a philosopher. Every angle is formed by two lines meeting. Both of those are propositions, where two ideas, or even terms, are joined or disjoined by an affirmation or negation. Three things go into the nature and constitution of a proposition. The subject, the predicate, and the copula. The subject of a proposition is the thing about which anything is going to be affirmed or denied. In our example, the subject was Plato and Angle. The predicate is that which is affirmed or denied about the subject. For example, that Plato was a philosopher, or that an angle is formed by two lines meeting. It is what is affirmed or denied of the subject. The copula is the form of a proposition where something is proposed. It represents the act of the mind agreeing, either affirming or denying. It is usually expressed by words like am, is, are, are also, am not, is not, are not, etc. For example, geese are not chickens. The copula shows that the ideas do not agree. A proposition can have all these parts, the subject, the predicate, the copula, without expressed distinctly in so many words. For example, Socrates disputed, I die, I can write. In those examples we have the two ideas or even the two terms, and an affirmation is made, but it's not specifically stated by a distinct word. If a proposition has a subject and a copula without a predicate, it shows both the act of the mind judging and signifies also actual existence, which is the predicate of that proposition. For example, Rome is. Carthage is no more. I am. In these examples, the affirming of the actual existence is the predicate. The subject and predicate of a proposition are not always known and found out by the placement or order of the words in the sentence. For example, it is proper for a philosopher to understand geometry. In Africa, there are many lions. When you hear propositions, or whether you read a proposition, there are several things that we can look for. Number one, the subject and predicate of a proposition should always be two different ideas or two different terms. When the terms and the ideas are the same, it is called an identical proposition. It cannot tend to promote knowledge. Some examples of identical proposition would be, a rule is a rule, a good man is a good man. That is an unfruitful proposition because the ideas and the terms are the same thing. But sometimes the terms of the subject and predicate may seem to be the same, but the ideas are not the same. For example, home is home. The hero was not a hero. What I have written, I have written. What is done, is done. In those examples, even though the terms of the subject and predicate seem to be the same, the ideas are not the same. So it is a good proposition. Also, sometimes the terms of the subject and predicate can be different, but the ideas may be the same. For example, impudent is shameless. A billow is a wave. 
a globe is a round body. In these propositions, the words are explained by definition of the name, or the ideas are explained by definition of the things. And this proposition is useful in knowledge.